U.S. President Joe Biden is in Asia for his tri- first trip rather there as president, and he's making waves. Biden was asked if the U.S. military would intervene on behalf of Taiwan should China invade. Here's what he said. You didn't want to get involved in the Ukraine conflict militarily for obvious reasons. Are you willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan if it comes to that? Yes. You are? That's the commitment we made. A White House official later tried to walk those comments back, insisting there isn't a change in policy toward Taiwan, a policy that's known as strategic ambiguity. Gordon Holden is the director emeritus, University of Alberta's China Institute. He headed the Canadian mission in Taiwan from 2004 to 2006. Hi, Professor Holden. Good to have you back on our program this evening. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Mercy. What was your first reaction when you heard those comments from the U.S. president? I was both surprised and not surprised. It did appear to fly the face of traditional U.S. policy, which is to be create strategic ambiguity, uncertainty. On the other hand, President Biden, both as president uh, and as uh, has on several occasions last summer, last fall, made similar comments, which were in effect walked back uh, by the White House, which appears to be the case here as well. Explain to us why they would be doing that walking back after each time, and and especially this time he made those comments. Well, I think the walking back isn't always completely successful. He is the president, after all, and speaks his mind. I think when he made some comments on Russia, about Putin being a war criminal, I'm not sure that was in his briefing notes. I suspect it wasn't. Uh, But the, the fear of the State Department, folks probably in the National Security Council, is that this is a super delicate file involving security interests of the two great powers of the earth, and that freelancing or spontaneity or definitiveness is not what's required, and that rather sticking to the text and the, and the policies that have been re, re, re-emphasized dozens of times reassures Beijing as opposed to make Beijing nervous. And do you think those comments uh, do make Beijing nervous? Should they? They do make Beijing nervous because Beijing is looking for an opportunity, in my view, at a time of their choosing, at a time when they think it will succeed, to to invade Taiwan. Um, there's no timetable, in my view, set. It's not tomorrow. It's not right away. But it is the reunification of China, as described by President Xi Jinping, is a core part of his mantra and broadly supported by the Chinese people. So it's... It's, it's a, a, a file where um, cautiousness, um, carefulness is, I think, a, a great advantage. I'm not suggesting that the U.S. can't and doesn't change its policies, but it's not one where you want to change on a whim or by misspeaking. It didn't, it didn't seem, and to your point, like there was uh, misspeaking going on, just given the number of instances in which we've kind of covered this sort of event from the U.S. president. And I thought it was interesting, and I'm interested to get your take on, on the way in which the question was framed, too, sort of uh, ask the president to, uh, you know, contrast what his position would be with that he's taken, uh, that of which he's taken with Ukraine. So I think the question was, Um, You didn't want to get involved in the Ukraine conflict militarily for obvious reasons. Are you willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan if it comes to that? And he said, yes, that was, you know, that's the commitment we made. Uh, And and I know you talked about strategic ambiguity, but um, how do you like technically, how do you interpret that? Does that mean that if, for example, China were to try and invade, it looks like the U.S. would go much further than supplying military aid, which it has done to Ukraine? Well, the U.S. has never given up, nor does other sovereign countries, I suppose, the right to, to, to military action in, in defense of their interests. I mean, in practical terms, that's always there. One of the advantages of, of ambiguity, and I think back to the time when I ran the Canadian office in Taiwan, one of my U.S. counterparts in the U.S. mission said, and he had a, uh, Chen shui was a fairly, not entirely pre- predictable leader. And he said, look, I'm not going to write a blank check to Taiwan for the blood of American soldiers. In other words, let's see what the circumstances are. If it's a hard commitment you've made, we will come to their defense. No ifs, ands, or buts. That does mean if the situation arises, you better do that, uh, or your commitments more broadly will be, will be eroded. 
Do you think this changes, and I mean, it's very early, obviously, but could maybe have the potential to change the calculation on China's part at all, given what might be at stake? They are, I think, fortunately, that is the Chinese leadership, generally fairly conservative in terms of their foreign policy, and certainly when it comes to war making. Uh, I think that they will digest this very carefully. It's my impression that China, Beijing, unless they miscalculate terribly, as Putin did, will want to find a situation where they could take back Taiwan, in their terminology, um, without U.S. intervention or without a broader war. Um, there's always a possibility of miscalculation there. But imagine, let's say, chaos in Washington. Only 52% from the last poll I saw of the American people support sending U.S. troops to support Taiwan in case of war. Uh, so with an America first attitude, perhaps by the, the Republican candidate for presidency, or if you ended up with a chaotic situation in Washington, I, that's the kind of scenario, I think, where Beijing might just like his chances. But for the time being, uh, they have to react and did react to this. They read it this standard language, but they added at the end, the press spokesman from foreign ministry, we mean what we say. And I tend to take them at their word at that, i.e. that they would not um, just stand by uh, if, let's say, Taiwan made a declaration of independence. Not something that's coming anytime soon. Lots of Taiwanese would like that, but they know that that would be pouring gasoline on a fire. Okay, Professor Holden, I'll leave it there. Thanks very much for your analysis. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Vashi. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.